Poem One of Thirty American Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Thirty American Poems by Various. Poem One An Encounter by Robert Frost. Reading by Matt Perard. An Encounter. Once on the kind of day called weather breeder when the heat slowly hazes and the sun by its own power seems to be undone i was half boring through half climbing through a swamp of cedar choked with oil of cedar and scurf of plants and weary and overheated and sorry i ever left the road i knew i paused and rested on a sort of hook that had me by the coat as good as seated and since there was no other way to look looked up toward heaven and there against the blue stood over me a resurrected tree a tree that had been down and raised again a barkless spectre he had halted too as if for fear of treading upon me i saw the strange position of his hands up at his shoulders dragging yellow strands of wire with something in it from men to men where aren't you nowadays and what's the news you carry if you know and tell me where you're off for montreal me i'm not off for anywhere at all sometimes i wander out of beaten ways half looking for the orchid calypso end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number two of thirty american poems by various Border by Sir Teasdale from Love Songs. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Border. Life has a loveliness to sell, all beautiful and splendid things, blue waves whitened on a cliff, soaring fire that sways and sings, and children's faces looking up, holding wonder like a cup. Life as a loveliness to sell music like a curve of gold scent of pine trees in the rain eyes that love you arms that hold and for your spirit's still delight holy thoughts that star the night spend all you have for loveliness buy it and never count the cost for one white singing hour of peace count many a year of strife well lost and for a breath of ecstasy, give all you have been or could be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number three of Thirty American Poems by Various. The Beggar Family by Morris Rosenfeld. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. The Beggar Family Within the court, before the judge, There stand six wretched creatures, Their lame and weary, one and all, With pinched and pallid features. The father is a broken man, The mother weak and ailing, The little children skin and bone, With fear and hunger wailing. Their sins are very great, and call aloud for retribution, for theirs, maybe you guess, the crime of hopeless destitution. They look upon the judge's face, they know what judges ponder, they know the punishment that waits on those that beg and wander. For months from justice they have fled along the streets and highways, from farm to farm, from town to town, along the lanes and byways. They've slept full, oftentimes in jail. They're known in many places, yet still they live for all their woe that's stamped upon their faces. The woman's chill with fear. The man implores the judge, Oh, tell us, what will you? With our children small, relentlessly expel us? Oh, let us be, we'll sleep at night in corners dark. The city has room for all, and some kind soul will give a crust in pity. For wife and children I will toil, it cannot be much longer. For God Almighty 
is and good ere i for work am stronger oh let us here with men remain nor drive us any further oh why our curses will you have and not our blessings rather and now the sick man quails before the judge's piercing glances no only two of you shall go this time and take your chances your wife and you the children four you'll leave my man behind you for them within the orphan's home free places i will find you the father's dumb the mother shrieks my babes and me you'd sever if god there be such cruel act shall find forgiveness never but first o judge must you condemn to death their wretched mother i cannot leave my children dear with you or any other i bore and nursed them struggling still to shelter and to shield them o judge i'll beg from door to door my very life-blood yield them i know you do not mean it judge with us poor folk you're jesting give back my babes and further yet we'll wander unprotesting the judge alas has turned away the paper dread unrolled and useless all the mother's grief the wild and uncontrolled more cruel can a sentence be than that which now is given o oh, curse the system neath whose sway the human heart is riven end of poem this recording is in the public domain Poem number four of Thirty American Poems by Various. California City Landscape by Carl Sandburg. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. California City Landscape. On a mountainside, the real estate agents put up signs marking the city lots to be sold there. A man whose father and mother were Irish ran a goat farm halfway down the mountain. He drove a covered wagon years ago, understood how to handle a rifle, shot grouse, buffalo, Indians in a single year, and now was raising goats around a shanty down at the foot of the mountain. Two Japanese families had flower farms. A man and a woman were in rows of sweet peas, picking the pink and white flowers, to put in baskets and take to the Los Angeles market. They were clean as what they handled, there in the morning sun, the big people and the baby faces. Across the road, high on another mountain, stood a house saying, I am it, a commanding house. There was the home of a motion picture director, famous for lavish whorehouse interiors, clothes ransacked from the latest designs for women, and the combats of male against female. The mountain, the scenery, the layout of the landscape, and the peace of the morning sun as it happened, the miles of houses pocketed in the valley beyond, it was all worth looking at, worth wondering about. How long it might last, how young it might be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number five of thirty American poems by various a chorus girl by Edward Estlin Cummings. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. A chorus girl. When thou hast taken thy last applause, and when the final curtain strikes the world away, leaving to shadowy silence and dismay. That stage which shall not know thy smile again, Lingering a little while, while I see thee then, Ponder the tinsel part they let thee play, I see the red mouth, tarnished, the face gray, And smileless, silent eyes of Magdalene. The lights have laughed their last, without the street, Darkly awaiteth her whose feet have trod The silly souls of men to golden dust, she pauses on the lintel of defeat. Her heart breaks in a smile, and she is lust. Mine also, little painted poem of God. This is the garden, 
colors come and go frail azures fluttering from night's outer wing strong silent greens serenely lingering absolute lights like baths of golden snow this is the garden pursed lips do blow upon cool flutes within wide glooms and sing of harps celestial to the quivering string invisible faces hauntingly and slow this is the garden time shall surely reap and on death's blade lie many a flower curled in other lands where other songs be sung yet stand they here enraptured as among the slow deep trees perpetual of sleep some silver-fingered fountain steals the world it may not always be so and i say that if your lips which i have loved should touch another's and your dear strong fingers clutch his heart as mine in time not far away if on another's face your sweet hair lay in such a silence as i know or such great writhing words as uttering overmuch stand helplessly before the spirit at bay if this should be i say if this should be you of my heart send me a little word that i may go unto him and take his hands saying accept all happiness from me then shall i turn my face and hear one bird sing terribly afar in the lost lands end of poem this recording is in the public domain poem number six of thirty american poems by various dinner in a quick lunchroom by stephen vincent benet this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Berard. Dinner in a Quick Lunchroom Soup should be herald with a mellow horn, Blowing clear notes of gold against the stars, Strange entrees with a jangle of glass bars, Fantastically alive with subtle scorn, Fish by a plopping, gurgling rush of waters, Clear, vibrant waters, beautifully austere, roast with the thunder of drums to stun the ear a screaming fife a voice from ancient slaughters over the salad let the woodwinds moan then the green silence of many watercresses dessert a balalaika strummed alone coffee a slow low singing no passion stresses such are my thoughts as clank crash bang i brood and gorge the sticky mess these fools Call food. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number seven of thirty American poems by various. The eagle that is forgotten, by Nicholas Vachel Lindsay. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. THE EAGLE THAT IS FORGOTTEN Sleep softly, eagle forgotten, under the stone. Time has its way with you there, and the clay has its own. We have buried him now, but your foes, and in secret rejoiced. They made a brave show of their mourning, their hatred unvoiced. They had snarled at you, barked at you, foamed at you day after day. Now you were ended. They praised you and laid you away. The others that mourned you in silence and terror and truth, the widow bereft of her crust and the boy without youth, the mocked and the scorned and the wounded, the lame and the poor, that should have remembered forever, remember no more. Where are those lovers of yours? On what name do they call the lost that in armies wept over your funeral pall. They call on the names of a hundred high valiant ones. A hundred white eagles have risen, the sons of your sons. The zeal in their wings is a zeal that your dreaming began, the valor that wore out your soul in the service of man. Sleep softly, eagle forgotten, under the stone. Time has its way with you there, and the clay has its own. 
Sleep on, O brave-hearted, O wise man that kindled the flame. To live in mankind is far more than to live in a name. To live in mankind far, far more than to live in a name. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Eight of Thirty American Poems by Various A Fawn in Wall Street by John Myers O'Hara This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. A Fawn in Wall Street What shape so furtive steals along the dim, bleak street, barren of throngs this day of June, this day of rest when all the roses swoon, in attic vales where dryads wait for him? What sylvan this, and what the stranger whim that lured him here this golden afternoon, ways where the dusk has fallen over soon, in the deep canyon, torrentless and grim? Great Pan is far, O oh, mad astray, and these bare walls that leap to heaven and hide the skies are fanes men rear to other deities, Far to the east the haunted woodland lies, and cloudless still, from cyclad dotted seas, Hymettus and the hills of Hellas rise. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number nine of Thirty American Poems by Various From a Car Window by Ruth Guthrie Harding. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. From a Car Window. Pines and a blur of lithe young grasses, gold in a pool from the western glow, spread of wings where the last thrush passes, and thoughts of you as the sun dips low. Quiet lane and an irised meadow. How many summers have died since then? I wish you knew how the deepening shadow lies on the blue and green again. Dusk and the curve of field and hollow, etched in gray when a star appears, sunset, twilight, and dark to follow, and thoughts of you through a mist of tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number 10 of 30 American Poems by Various The Glory of the Day Was in Her Face by James Weldon Johnson This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The glory of the day was in her face, the beauty of the night was in her eyes, and over all her loveliness the grace of morning blushing in the early skies. And in her voice the calling of the dove like music of a sweet melodious part, and in her smile the breaking light of love, and all the gentle virtues in her heart. And now the glorious day, the beauteous night, the birds that signal to their mates at dawn, to my dull ears, to my tear-blinded sight, are one with all the dead, since she is gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number 11 of 30 American Poems by Various Heliodora by H. T. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Heliodora he and I sought together over the spattered table, rhymes and flowers, gifts for a name. He said, among others, I will bring, and the phrase was just as good, but not as good as mine, the Narcissus that loves the rain. We strove for a name, while the light of the lamps burnt thin, and the outer dawn came in, a ghost, the last at the feast, or the first to sit within, with the two that remained, to quibble in flowers and verse over a girl's name. 
He said, the rain-loving. I said, the narcissus, drunk, drunk with the rain. Yet I had lost, for he had said, the rose, the lover's gift, is loved of love. He said it, loved of love. I waited, even as he spoke, to see the room filled with a light, as when in winter the embers catch in a wind, when a room is dank, so it would be filled, I thought, our room with a light. When he said, and he said it first, the rose, the lover's delight, is love of love, but the light was the same. Then he caught, seeing the fire in my eyes, my fire, my fever, perhaps, for he leaned with the purple wine stained in his sleeve, and said this, Did you ever think a girl's mouth caught in a kiss is a lily that laughs? I had not. I saw it now, as men must see it forever afterwards. No poet could write again. The red lily, a girl's laugh, caught in a kiss. It was his to pour in the vat from which all poets dip and quaff, for poets are brothers in this. So I saw the fire in his eyes. It was almost my fire. He was younger. I saw the face so white, my heart beat. It was almost my phrase. I said, Surprise the muses. Take them by surprise. It is late. Rather, it is dawn-rise. Those ladies sleep, the nine, our own king's mistresses. A name to rhyme, flowers to bring to a name, which was one girl faint and shy, with eyes like the myrtle, I said. Her underlids are rather like myrtle. To vie with the nine? Let him take the name, he had the rhymes, the rose loved of love, the lily, a mouth that laughs. He had the gift, the scented crocus, the purple hyacinth. What was one girl to the nine? He said, I will make her a wreath. He said, I will write it thus. I will bring you the lily that laughs. I will twine with soft narcissus, the myrtle, sweet crocus, white violet, the purple hyacinth, and, last, the rose, loved of love, that these may drip on your hair. The less soft flowers may mingle sweet with the sweet of Heliodora's locks, myrrh curled. He wrote, myrrh curled, I think, the first. I said, they sleep, the nine. When he shouted swift and passionate, that, for the nine, above the mountains, the sun is about to wake, and today white violets shine beside white lilies adrift on the mountainside. Today the narcissus opens that loves the rain. I watched him to the door, catching his robe as the wine bowl crashed to the floor, spilling a few wet leaves. Ah, his purple hyacinth. I saw him out of the door. I thought there will never be a poet in all the centuries after this who will dare write, after my friend's verse, a girl's mouth is a lily kissed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number 12 of 30 American Poems by Various In Time of War, Medical Unit by Edgar Lee Masters This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard In Time of War Medical Unit Even as I see and share with you in seeing the altar flame of your love's sacrifice, and even as I bear before the hour the vision your little hands in hospital in prison laid upon broken bodies, dying eyes, so do I suffer for splendor of your being, which leads you from me, and in separation lays on my breast the pain of memory, over your hands I bend in silent adoration, dumb for fear of sorrow without end, asking for consolation. Out of the sacrament of our separation, and for some faithful word 
acceptable and true, that I may know and keep the mystery, that in this separation I go forth with you, and you to the world's end remain with me. How may I justify the hope that rises, that I am giving you to a world of pain, and am a part of your love's sacrifices? Is it so little, if I see you not again? You will croon soldier lads to sleep, even to the last sleep of all. But in this absence, as your love will keep your breast for me to comfort, if I fail, so I, though far away, shall kneel by you, if the last hour approaches to bedew your lips, that from their infant wondering lisp of a heaven lost, I shall kiss down your eyes, and count the cost as mine, who gave you, by the tragic giving, go forth with spirit to death, and to the living, bearing a solace in death. God has breathed on you his transfiguring breath. You are transfigured before me, and I bow my head, and leave you in the light that lights your way, and shadows me. Even now the hour is sped, and the hour we must obey. Look, you, I will go, pray. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number 13 of 30 American Poems by Various Keep My Hand by Louise Driscoll From Poetry, the Magazine of Verse, 1921 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard Keep My Hand because I am afraid to be alone. I am afraid of all the dreams I made. If you were shown, dream after little dream that I made gay, to keep my spirit strong upon the way, you would hold my hand closer than you do within your own. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. number 14 of 30 American Poems by Various The Moods by Fanny Stearns Davis This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. The Moods The moods have laid their hands across my hair. The moods have drawn their fingers through my heart. My hair shall never more lie smooth and bright, but stir like tide-worn seaweed, and my heart shall never more be glad of small sweet things, a wild rose or a crescent moon, a book of little verses or a dancing child. My heart turns crying from the rose and book, my heart turns crying from the thin bright moon, and weeps with useless sorrow for the child. The moods have loosed a wind to vex my hair, and made my heart too wise that was a child. Now I shall blow like smitten candle flame. I shall desire all things that may not be, the years, the stars, the souls of ancient men, all tears that must, and smiles that may not be, yes, glimmering lights across a windy ford, and vagrant voices on a darkened plain, and holy things, and outcast things, and things far too remote, frail body to be plain. My pity and my joy are grown alike. I cannot sweep the strangeness from my heart. The moods have laid swift hands across my hair. The moods have drawn swift fingers through my heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number 15 of 30 American Poems by Various The Negro Speaks of Rivers by Langston Hughes This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. 
I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo, and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans, and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 16 of 30 American Poems by Various Night Peace by John Dos Passos This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard Night Peace A silver web has the moon spun, A silver web upon all the sky, Where the frail stars quiver, every one, Like tangled gnats that hum and die. The moon has tangled the dull night in her silver skin, And set alight each dew-damp branch with milky flame, And huge the moon broods on the night. My soul is caught in the web of the moon, Like a shrilling gnat in a spider's web, Importunate memories shrill in my ears, Like the gnats that die in the spider web. Lovely as death, in the moon's shroud were town streets, gray houses, dim, full of strange peace in the silent night. As we walked our footsteps clattered loud, we felt the night as a troubled song, oh, the triumphing sense of a life a throb. Behind those walls, in those dark streets, like the sound of a river, swift, unseen, flowing in darkness, oh, the hoarse, half-heard murmur, swirling beneath the snowy beauty of moonlight and that other night when the river rippled with faint spears of street lights vaguely reflected gray the evening like an opal lo a gray moon shrouded in sea fog air pregnant with spring rasp of my steps beside the lapping water within the dark down the worn-out years a sob of broken loves old pain of dead farewells and one face fading into gray a silver web has the moon spun a silver web over all the sky in her flooding glory one by one like gnats in a web the stars die end of poem this recording is in the public domain of thirty american poems by various patience by amy lowell this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt Berard. patience be patient with you when the stooping sky leans down upon the hills and tenderly as one who soothing stills and anguish gathers earth to lie embraced and girdled do the sun-filled men feel patience then? Be patient with you, when the snow-girt earth cracks to let through a spurt of sudden green, and from the muddy dirt a snowdrop leaps, how mark its worth to eyes frost-hardened, and do weary men feel patient then? Be patient with you, when pain's iron bars, their rivets tighten, stern to bend and break their victims as they turn hopeless there stand the purple jars of night to spill oblivion do these men feel patience then be patient with you you my sun and moon my basket full of flowers my money bag of shining dreams my hours windless and still of afternoon you are my world and i your citizen what meaning can have patience then? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 18 of 30 American Poems by Various Portrait of a Lady by T.S. Eliot This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. 
Portrait of a Lady Thou hast committed fornication, but that was in another country, and besides, the wench is dead. The Jew of Malta 1. Among the smoke and fog of a December afternoon, you have the scene arrange itself, as it will seem to do, with I have saved this afternoon for you, and four wax candles in the darkened room, four rings of light upon the ceiling overhead, an atmosphere of Juliet's tomb, prepared for all the things to be said or left unsaid. We have been, let us say, to hear the latest pole transmit the preludes through his hair and fingertips. So intimate this Chopin, that I think his soul should be resurrected only among friends, some two or three, who will not touch the bloom that is rubbed and questioned in the concert room. And so the conversation slips among velities and carefully caught regrets, through attenuated tones of violins mingled with remote cornets and begins. You do not know how much they mean to me, my friends, and how, how rare and strange it is to find in a life composed so much of odds and ends, for indeed I do not love it. You knew? You are not blind? How keen you are to find a friend who has these qualities, who has and gives those qualities upon which friendship lives. How much it means that I say this to you, Without these friendships, life, what cauchemar, among the windings of the violins and the ariettes of cracked cornets, inside my brain a dull tom-tom begins, absurdly hammering a prelude of its own capricious monotone. That is at least one definite false note. Let us take the air, and a tobacco trance. Admire the monuments, discuss the late events, correct our watches by the public clocks, then sit for half an hour and drink our box. 2. Now that lilacs are in bloom, she has a bowl of lilacs in her room, and twists one in her fingers while she talks. Ah, my friend, you do not know, you do not know what life is, you who hold it in your hands. Slowly twisting the lilac stalks. You let it float from you, you let it flow, and youth is cruel and has no remorse, and smiles at situations which it cannot see. I smile, of course, and go on drinking tea. Yet, with these April sunsets that somehow recall my buried life and Paris in the spring, I feel immeasurably at peace and find the world to be wonderful and youthful after all. The voice returns like the insistent out-of-tune of a broken violin on an August afternoon. I am always sure that you understand my feelings, always sure that you feel, sure that across the gulf you reach your hand. You are invulnerable, you have no Achilles' heel. You will go on, and when you have prevailed, you can say, at this point, many a one has failed. But what have I, but what have I, my friend, to give you? What can you receive from me? Only the friendship and the sympathy of one about to reach her journey's end. I shall sit here, serving tea to friends. I take my hat. How can I make a cowardly amends for what she has said to me? You will see me any morning in the park, reading the comics and the sporting page, Particularly, I remark, an English countess goes upon the stage, a Greek was murdered at a Polish dance, another bank defaulter has confessed. I keep my countenance, I remain self-possessed, except when a street piano, mechanical and tired, reiterates some worn-out common song, with a smell of hyacinths across the garden, recalling things that other people have desired. Are these ideas right or wrong? 3. The October night comes down, returning as before, except for a slight sensation of being ill at ease. I mount the stairs and turn the handle of the door, 
and feel as if I mounted on my hands and knees. And so you're going abroad, and when do you return? But that's a useless question. You hardly know when you are coming back. You will find so much to learn. My smile falls heavily among the bric-a-brac. Perhaps you can write to me. My self-possession flares up for a second. This is as I had reckoned. I have been wandering frequently of late, but our beginnings never know our ends. Why we have not developed into friends? I feel like one who smiles, and turning, shall remark, suddenly, his expression in a glass. My self-possession gutters. We are really in the dark. For everybody says so. All our friends. They all were sure our feelings would relate so closely. I myself can hardly understand. We must leave it now to fate. You will write at any rate. Perhaps it is not too late. I shall sit here, serving tea to friends. And I must borrow every changing, find expression, dance, dance like a dancing bear, cry like a parrot, chatter like an ape. Let us take the air and a tobacco trance. Well, and what if she should die some afternoon, afternoon gray and smoky, evening yellow and rose, should die and leave me sitting pen in hand with the smoke coming down above the housetops, doubtful for quite a while, not knowing what to feel or if I understand, or whether wise or foolish, tardy or too soon, would she not have the advantage after all? This music is successful with the dying fall. Now that we talk of dying, and should I have the right to smile? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 19 of 30 American Poems by Various The Recompense by Robert Hillier This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard The Recompense When the last song is sung and the last spark of light dies out forever and the dark, the voiceless dark eternal, shrouds the earth when the last cries of pain and shouts of mirth sink in the desolate silences of space where then shall flower the beauty of your face o oh, love the laughing youth the rose in hand in what unknown and discovered land shall flower then the beauty of your face i know not but i know that all returns at last unchanged and to the heart that yearns shall be repaid all loneliness and loss sometime with shadowy sails shall fly across the shoreless ocean of infinity a ship from out the past and the great sea of life shall bear you from the strange worlds over the waves and back again to the old lover yes in some future far beyond surmise you will dream here with half remembering eyes and i shall write these words content a while in the slow round of time to see you smile End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 20 of 30 American Poems by Various. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Red Earth by Alice Corbin Henderson. Red Earth, El Rito de Santa Fe. This valley is not ours, nor these mountains, nor the names we give them. They belong, they, and this sweep of sun-washed air, desert and hill and crumbling earth, to those who have lain here long years, and felt the soak of the sun through the red sand and crumbling rock, till even their bones were part of the sun-steeped valley. How many years we know not, nor what names they gave to antelope, wolf or bison, to prairie dog or coyote, to this hill where we stand, or the moon over your shoulder. Let us build a monument to time that knows all, sees all, and contains all, to whom these bones in the valley are even as we are, 
even time's monument would crumble before the face of time and be as these white bones washed clean and bare by the sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain twenty one of thirty american poems by various romance modern by william carlos williams this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Romance Modern. Tracks of rain and light linger in the spongy greens of a nature whose flickering mountain, bulging nearer, ebbing back into the sun, hollowing itself away to hold a lake, or brown stream rising and falling at the roadside, turning about, churning itself white, drawing green in over it plunging glassy funnels fall and the other world the windshield a blunt barrier talk to me shh they would hear us the backs of their heads facing us the stream continues its motion of a hound running over rough ground trees vanish reappear vanish detached dance of gnomes as a talk dodging remarks glows and fades the unseen power of words and now that a few of the moves are clear the first desire is to fling oneself out at the side into the other dance to other music peer ghent rip van winkle diana if i were young i would try a new alignment alight nimbly from the car good-bye childhood companions link two and two criss-cross four three two one back into self tentacles withdrawn feel about in warm self-flesh since childhood since childhood childhood is a toad in the garden a happy toad all toads are happy and belong in gardens a load to diana lean forward punch the steersman behind the ear twirl the wheel over the edge screams crash the end i sit above my head a little removed or a thin wash of rain on the roadway I am never afraid when he is driving, interposes new direction, rides us sidewise, unforeseen into the ditch, all threads cut, death, black, the end, the very end. I would sit separate, weighing a small red handful, the dirt of these parts, sliding mists, sheeting the alders, against the touch of fingers creeping to mine. All stuff of the blind emotions but stirred the eye seizes for the first time the eye awake anything a dirt bank with green stars of scrawny weed flattened upon it under a weight of air for the first time or a yawning depth big swim around it through it all directions in fine vitreous seawater stuff god how i love you or as I say, a plunge into the ditch, the end. I sit examining my red handful, balancing this in and out. Ah! Love you? It's a fire in the blood, willy-nilly. It's the sun coming up in the morning. Ha! But it's the gray moon, too, already up in the morning. You are slow. Men are not friends where it concerns a woman. Fighters? Playfellows, white round thighs, youth, sighs. It's the fillip of novelty. It's mountains. Elephants humping along against the sky, indifferent to light withdrawing its tattered shreds, worn out with embraces. It's the fillip of novelty. It's a fire in the blood. Oh, get a flannel shirt, white flannel or pongee. You'd look so well. I married you because I liked your nose. I wanted you. I wanted you in spite of all they'd say. Rain and light. Mountain and rain. Rain and river. Will you love me always? A car overturned and two crushed bodies under it. Always. Always. And the white moon already up. White. Clean. All the colors. A good head. Backed by the eye. Awake. Backed by the emotions blind river and mountain light and rain or rain rock light trees 
divided, rain light counter rocks, trees, or trees counter rain light rocks, or myriads of other, myriads of counter processions, crossing and recrossing, regaining the advantage, buying here, selling there. You are sold cheap everywhere in town, lingering, touching fingers, withdrawing, gathering forces into blares, hummocks, peaks and rivers, river meeting rock. I wish that you were lying there dead, and I sitting here beside you. It's the gray moon, over and over. It's the clay of these parts. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 22 of 30 American Poems by Various C. Quatrains by Grant H. Code From Poetry, the Magazine of Verse, 1921 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Too fast the silly white caps run, their helter-skelter races. They stumble when the goal is won, and fall upon their faces. A purple light is shaken over the greener ocean shadows, like clover on the cooler depths of grass and upland meadows. The sea hangs kelp upon the sand, like garlands on a grave, mourning the dead and silent land with every living wave. The breakers thunder in the night, with which the sea is drenched. Only one plunging line is white, even the stars are quenched. The fairest ship ever a wreck had not so white a sail as this fair wave cast up to break, driven before the gale. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number 23 of 30 American Poems by Various The Snowman by Wallace Stevens From Poetry, 1921 to 1922 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Snowman by Wallace Stevens One must have a mind of winter to regard the frost in the boughs of the pine trees crusted with snow, and have been cold a long time to behold the junipers shagged with ice, the spruces rough in the distant glitter of the January sun, and not to think of any misery in the sound of the wind, in the sound of a few leaves, which is the sound of the land full of the same wind that is blowing in the same bare place, for the listener who listens in the snow, and nothing himself, beholds nothing that is not there, and the nothing that is. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number 24 of 30 American Poems by Various The Song of a Comet by Clark Ashton Smith this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Song of a Comet A plummet of the changing universe, Far cast I flare through gulfs The sun's uncharted orbits bind, And spaces bare, That intermediate darks immerse, By road of sun nor world confined, Upon my star undominated gyre, I mark the systems vanish one by one. Among the swarming worlds I lunge and sudden plunge, close to the zones of solar fire, or mid the mighty rack of stars undone, flash and with momentary rays compel the dark to yield their aimless forms, whose once far potent blaze in ashes chill is now inurned. A space revealed, I see their planets turned, where holders of the heritage of breath exultant rose and sank to barren death beneath the stars' unheeding eyes. Adown contiguous skies I pass the thickening broom of systems yet unshaped, 
that hang immense along mysterious shores of gloom or see unimplicated in their doom the final and disastrous gyre of blinded suns that meet and from their mingled heat and battle clouds intense o'erspread the deep with fire through stellar labyrinths i thrilled i thread mine orbit placed amid the multiple and irised stars or hid unsolved and intricate in many a planet swinging sun's estate oft times i steal in solitary flight along the rim of the exterior night that grips the universe and then return past outer footholds of sidereal light to where the systems gather and disperse and dip again into the web of things to watch it shift and burn hearted with stars on peaceless wings i pierce where deep outstripping all surmise the nether heavens drop unsunned by stars and planets shunned and then i rise through vaulting gloom to watch the dark snatch at the flame of falling suns or mark the heavy dust and silent skies strewn thick with wrecked and broken stars where many a faded orbit runs and arrows sped from some eternal bow through change of firmaments and systems sent and finding born not bars i flee nor know for what eternal mark my flight is meant End of The Song of a Comet by Clark Ashton Smith. This recording is in the public domain. Poem number 25 of 30 American Poems by Various. Tampa Robins by Sidney Lanier. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Tampa Robins. The robin laughed in the orange tree. Ho, windy north, a fig for thee. While breasts are red and wings are bold, and green trees wave us globes of gold, time's scythe shall reap but bliss for me. Sunlight, song, and the orange tree. Burn golden globes in leafy sky. My orange planet's crimson eye will shine and shoot among the spheres blithe meteor that no mortal fears and thrid the heavenly orange tree with orbits bright of minstrelsy if that i hate wild winter's spite the gibbet trees the world in white the sky but gray wind over a grave why should i ache the season's slave i'll sing from the top of the orange tree gramercy winter's tyranny I'll south with the sun and keep my clime. My wing is king of the summer time. My breast to the sun his torch shall hold, and I'll call down through the green and gold. Time, take thy scythe, reap bliss for me. Bestir thee under the orange tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Number 26 of 30 American Poems by Various Two Lovers, Overtones by Conrad Aiken This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard Two Lovers, Overtones Two lovers, here at the corner by the steeple, two lovers blow together like music blowing and the crowd dissolves about them like a sea recurring waves of sound break vaguely about them they drift from wall to wall from tree to tree well am i late upward they look and laugh they look at the great clock's golden hands they laugh and talk not knowing what they say only their words like music seem to play and seeming to walk they tread strange sarabands i brought you this the soft words float like stars down the smooth heaven of her memory she stands again by a garden wall the peach tree is in bloom pink blossoms fall water sings from an open tap 
The bees glisten and murmur among the trees. Someone calls from the house. She does not answer. Backward she leans her head and dreamily smiles at the peach tree leaves, where through she sees an infinite May sky spread, a vault profoundly blue. The voice from the house fades far away, the glistening leaves more vaguely ripple and sway. The tap is closed, the water ceases to hiss. Silence, blue sky, and then I brought you this. She turns again and smiles, he does not know. She smiles from long ago. She turns to him and smiles. Sunlight above him roars like a vast invisible sea. Gold is beaten before him, shrill bells of silver. He is released of weight, his body is free. He lifts his arms to swim, dark years like sinister tides coil under him. The lazy sea waves crumble along the beach with a whirring sound like wind in bells. He lies outstretched on the yellow, wind-worn sands, reaching his lazy hands among the golden grains and sea-white shells. One rose, or is it pink today? They pause and smile, not caring what they say, if only they may talk. The crowd flows past them like dividing waters. Dreaming they stand, dreaming they walk. Pink, today. Face turns to dream bright face. Green leaves rise round them. Sunshine settles upon them. Water in drops of silver falls from the rose. She smiles at a face that smiles through leaves from the mirror. She breathes the fragrance. Her dark eyes close. Time is dissolved. It blows like a little dust. Time, like a flurry of rain, patters and passes, starring the window pane. Once, long ago, one night, she saw the lightning with long blue quiver of light ripping the darkness, and as she turned in terror, a soft face leaned above her, leaned softly down, softly around her a breath of roses was blown. She sank in waves of quiet, she seemed to float in a sea of silence, and soft steps grew remote. Well, let us walk in the park, the sun is warm, we'll sit on a bench and talk, they turn and glide, the crowd of faces wavers and breaks and flows. Look how the oak tops turned gold in the sunlight. Look how the tower is changed and glows. Two lovers move in the crowd like a link of music. We press upon them, we hold them, and let them pass. A chord of music strikes us, and straight we tremble. We tremble like wind-blown grass. What was this dream we had? A dream of music, music that rose from the opening earth like magic and shook its beauty upon us and died away. The long, cold streets extend once more before us. The red sun drops. The walls grow gray. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By Abby Farwell Brown. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. The Wall. Something there is that doesn't like a wall. Robert Frost. Not like a wall? I sit above the meadow in the glowing fall, tracing the gray redoubt from square to square, which bound the acres harvest ripe and fair, and wonder if it's true. Nay, ask the sumac and the teeming vine that lean upon the boulders, the crimsoning ivy and the wild woodbine, whose eager fingers clutch the stony shoulders, the goldenrod, the aster and the rue. Ask the red squirrel with the chubby cheek, skipping from stone to stone by a quick route, his hidden hoard to seek making the little viaduct his own. Look where the woodchuck lifts a cautious head. 
between the rocks close by the cabbage bed. The honeybees have built a secret hive in a forgotten chink, and there a gray cocoon is tucked away, shrouding a miracle in mauve and pink to wait its Easter day. The wall with pageantry is all alive. And I who gaze on the dark border here, drawn like a ribbon round the pasture ways, embroidered with the glory of the year, do I not like the wall? Lo, I remember how, in days of old, my grandsire toiled with weariness and pain to dig the cumbering boulders from the mold, piled them in ordered rows again, fitting them firm and fast, a monument to last, long after his own hairy day was past. He cleared the rocky soil for corn and grain, by which his children throve to carry on the race. We live by his life-giving. I see each stone, rough like his granite face, uncompromising, stern, no slave to love, dowered with little grace, grim with the hard, unjoyful task of living, but strong to stand the wrath of storm and time, and bolts that heaven let fall, built of a patriot's prime. I love the wall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 28 of 30 American Poems by Various Weeds by Edna St. Vincent Millay This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Weeds White with daisies and red with sorrel, and empty, empty under the sky. Life is a quest and love a quarrel. Here is a place for me to lie. Daisies spring from damned seeds, and this red fire that here I see is a worthless crop of crimson weeds, cursed by farmers thriftily. But here, unhated for an hour, the sorrel runs in ragged flame. The daisy stands a bastard flower, like flowers that bear an honest name. And here a while, where no wind brings the baying of a pack athirst, may sleep the sleep of blessed things, the blood too bright, the brow accursed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poem 29 of Thirty American Poems by Various We Too, How Long We Were Fooled by Walt Whitman This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Berard We Too, How Long We Were Fooled We Too, How Long We Were Fooled, Now Transmuted, We Swiftly Escape As Nature Escapes, We Are Nature, Long have we been absent, but now we return. We become plants, trunks, foliage, roots, bark. We are bedded in the ground. We are rocks. We are oaks. We grow in the opening side by side. We browse. We are two among the wild herds, spontaneous as any. We are two fishes swimming in the sea together. We are what locust blossoms are. We drop scent around lanes, mornings and evenings. We are also the coarse smut of beasts, vegetables, minerals. We are two predatory hawks. We soar above and look down. We are two resplendent suns. We it is who balance ourselves orbic and stellar. We are as two comets. We prowl fanged and four-footed. In the woods, we spring on prey. We are two clouds, forenoons and afternoons, driving overhead. We are seas mingling. We are two of those cheerful waves rolling over each other and interwetting each other. We are what the atmosphere is, transparent, receptive, pervious, impervious. We are snow, rain, cold, darkness. We are each product an influence of the globe. We have circled and circled till we have arrived home again, we too. 
we have voided all but freedom and all but our own joy end of poem this recording is in the public domain and dedicated to john and wendy Poem 30 of 30 American Poems by Various You and You by Edith Wharton This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard You and You to the American Private in the Great War Every one of you won the war. You and You and you, each one knowing what it was for, and what was his job to do. Every one of you won the war, obedient, unwearied, unknown, dung in the trenches, drift on the shore, dust to the world's end blown, every one of you, steady and true. You, and you, and you, down in the pit, or up in the blue, whether you crawled, or sailed, or flew, whether your closest comrade knew, or you bore the brunt alone. All of you, all of you, name after name, Jones and Robinson, Smith and Brown, you from the piping prairie town, you from the fundy fogs that came, you from the city's roaring blocks, you from the bleak New England rocks, with the shingled roof and the apple boughs, you from the brown adobe house, you from the Rockies, you from the coast, you from the burning frontier posts, and you from the Klondike's frozen flanks, you from the cedar swamps, you from the pine, you from the cotton and you from the vine, you from the rice and the sugar breaks, you from the rivers and you from the lakes, you from the creeks and you from the licks, and you from the brown bio, you and you and you. You from the pulpit, you from the mine, you from the factories, you from the banks, closer and closer, ranks on ranks, airplanes and cannon and rifles and tanks, Smith and Robinson, Brown and Jones, ruddy faces or bleaching bones, after the turmoil and blood and pain, swinging home to the folks again, or sleeping alone in the fine French rain, every one of you won the war. Every one of you won the war, you and you and you, pressing and pouring forth more and more, toiling and straining from shore to shore, to reach the flaming edge of the dark, where man and his millions went up like a spark, you and your thousands and millions coming, all the sea ploughed with you, all the air humming, all the land loud with you, all our hearts proud with you, all our souls bowed with the awe of your coming. Where's the arch high enough, lads, to receive you? Where's the eye dry enough, dears, to perceive you, when at last and at last in your glory you come, tramping home? Every one of you won the war, you and you and you, you that carry an unscathed head, you that halt with a broken tread, and, oh, most of all, you dead, you dead. Lift up the gates for these that are last in the great procession. Let the living pour in, take possession. Flood back to the city, the ranch, the farm, the church, and the college and mill. Back to the office, the store, the exchange. Back to the wife with a babe on her arm. Back to the mother that waits on the sill and the supper that's hot on the range. And now... When the last of them all are by, be the gates lifted up on high to let those others in, those others, their brothers, that softly tread, that come so thick yet take no ground, that are so many yet make no sound. Our dead, our dead, our dead! O oh, silent and secretly moving throng, in your fifty thousand strong, coming at dusk when the wreaths have dropped, and streets are empty, and music stopped. Silently coming to hearts that wait, dumb in the door and dumb at the gate, and to hear your step and fly to your call, every one of you won the war, but you, you dead, most of all. 
End of poem. End of 30 American Poems by Various.